New Zealand are in England for three T20Is followed by five ODIs. On this edition of Beyond the Boundary presented by Fast Enough, we have the New Zealand skipper, Sophie Devine. Hello, Sophie. How are you doing? I'm very good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. First of all, welcome, not just to our show, but welcome back to cricket. How has that break that you took been? Uh, yeah, look, it was very necessary. Uh, I probably got to a point where I wasn't able to to fulfil my role. Um, I guess it's just the same as any physical injury, whether you, you know, hurt your hamstring or your hand. It's same with the mind. So for me, it was really important that I took some time away from the game and then I'm certainly feeling very refreshed and, and ready to get going again. Yeah, mental health is kind of an important conversation in this age and era, especially in, a, in an age where you have to be in bio bubbles. What has changed for you uh, from March to now? Uh, I think it's getting some time away. I think I was probably in bubbles from about uh, August last year through to well, close to the start of January, which, you know, it is, a, as you say, COVID sort of presented some difficult challenges. And for me, being in bubbles, restricted living, uh, quite a few quarantines, self-isolation, uh, I guess it just really, I guess, put me under strain and I didn't really realise until deep into the cricket season. So for me, just getting some time away and being able to spend it with friends and family was really important for me and, and to gain a bit of perspective, but also to gain some skills to, I guess, try and learn with the new environment that we're finding ourselves in. Yeah, we read that you worked with New Zealand cricket's psychologist in Natalie Hogg. How important is, uh, I mean, we don't have travelling psychologists as a norm. How important is that going forward? Yeah, look, it's huge. I think um, certainly probably over the last five, ten years, I think not just cricketers, I think athletes have identified the importance of the top two inches and what goes on upstairs. So uh, I guess I'm no different. And I know another a lot of couple of players in this team uh, are very similar as well, working with psychologists to, to aid their performance. So for me, I've got a great relationship with Nat Hogg, have been, I guess, working with her for a number of years. And uh, it is, it's really important. And I guess one of the key strategies I've worked on is is having that constant communication with her, whether things are going well or not so well. Uh, just to be able to check in and talk with someone that, I guess, uh, has a pretty good understanding of how I operate. So she's certainly been really important for me, I guess, getting back to this space. Yeah, now coming closer to the series, you as New Zealand Miss Amelia Kerr, she's on a mental health break. First, your thoughts on how big a void that is and second, how will this break, you think, help her? Yeah, I guess I'm probably in a bit of a unique position that I probably went through a similar, I guess, situation not too long ago. So I certainly uh, was fully supportive of Amelia's decision to to step away and, and I guess me more than anyone um, appreciate the importance of putting yourself first and, and I think the key thing that not just myself but everyone at New Zealand Cricket understands is that we're people first and cricket is second and, and for us look we're absolutely going to miss Mealy and um, she's a huge part to this team and you know we, we'll miss her skills because she's a threat with both bat and ball so we will miss her but we know that she's got to look after herself first and foremost so we know that she's getting the support back at home and, and she'll be coming back whenever she's ready whenever that might be. Yeah, we know you are coming back, but there's also another key player for New Zealand who's coming back, that is Susie Bates. She, she did well in that warm-up clash, scoring a 70. Your thoughts on having your one of your trusted aides back in that New Zealand team? Yeah, look, it's awesome to have Suze back. Obviously, she's been missing for a while now, and I know she's been absolutely chomping at the bit to get back into the New Zealand colours. And as you mentioned, she played beautifully at the warm-up game, and it was like she hasn't been away at all, so I knew it. It settled some nerves for her, which was really important. I think it was for her first, I guess, serious injury in her career, which is pretty amazing when you consider how long she's been playing for. So, look, she did fantastically well, and I'm really excited. She just brings, I guess, amazingly a youthful buzz and energy to this group. I know she's probably one of the older older players in the group, but she just brings a real energy to the group that is infectious, and I know has already had a massive impact on this group. And why Bates' form is also crucial for your team's success is because we've seen this year that New Zealand haven't been able to nail that opening combination. Is that something that gives you sleepless nights? Because we've seen Haley Jensen who did well in that first opportunity, but not really been consistent throughout. So is that an area that you have sleepless nights over? 
Oh, look, I wouldn't say it's sleepless nights. I think certainly it's a, it's an area that we've identified that we'd love to improve. And as you say, Haley's done a wonderful job. I think we've got to remember, though, that Haley's only just, this is her first time opening, you know, and she's only played a handful of games there. And we know how tough it is playing against the new ball again. I know how tough that is. Best bowlers, the toughest part of the game, I think, with the new ball swinging around. So, look, we've got full faith in Haley or whoever opens um, in our lineup, I think. We've all got to take responsibility, though. I think it's hard for us to, you know, point the finger at one person. We know that as a team, as a collective, we didn't shape up with the bat last year and last season. And, and we know that we all need to contribute a lot more with the bat. And then hopefully, you know, do the job with the ball. We've seen Sophie Devine smash it at the top, opening the batting. Is Are we going to see her more down the order in that middle order as we saw in that warm up clash? Yeah, potentially. Look, we, we're certainly still, I guess, um, trying to figure out. Obviously, the World Cup's the ultimate goal for us. So we're sort of still piecing together, I guess, the makeup of our team. And obviously, with merely missing this tour, it gives someone else an opportunity to potentially step into that batting role. So, yeah, look, we're still trying to figure out where the jigsaw pieces fit and, and where I best suit in this team. And I think that's the really important thing that we've told all our players in this group is we need you to fill a role in this team and, and go about your business as best you can. So, yeah, look, I would go wherever I need to be. I think we were actually chatting at the, the warm-up game the other day. I think I've batted every position from 1 to 11 in this New Zealand side. So I'm happy to go anywhere. And again, talking about you and your form, not really the kind of form you'd want at an international stage. We, how far are we or how close are we to seeing the Super Smash Sophie Divine or the WBBL Sophie Divine? Oh, look, hopefully it's just around the corner. I think um, it's a tough one because, yeah, I certainly didn't feel massively out of form. Um, I think cricket can be a pretty tough game and certainly you, you have some really good moments and I've been fortunate that I've been in a bit of form um, over the last couple of years and unfortunately I, I wasn't up to scratch at the international season and I'm the first one to put my hand up and say my performances weren't good enough um, but it wasn't through lack of trying or effort so for me it's just really important for me to stick to my processes and knowing what I do well and, and fingers crossed the results will come on the park. Yeah, and lastly kind of Every ODI series, every ODI game that teams play these days are seen from a lens of that World Cup that is approaching. So, how are you preparing for this series against England in that respect? Yeah, we've been really fortunate actually. Obviously, the, the COVID response in New Zealand, we're extremely fortunate that for the last four or five months until very recently actually we've been able to live a pretty normal life so we've actually been holding camps every two weeks um, together as, a, as an extended squad so we've had five camps over the last 10 weeks which has been enormous for us to spend that quality time together uh, on some fantastic facilities as well around the country with that eye as you say to the World Cup next year at home obviously a bit of an advantage there knowing what the conditions are like so We've been training extremely hard for the last, it feels like, four or five months. Um, and we're excited to be here in England. We know the challenge we're up against. We know that they're a quality side. They're the reigning world champs. So we, we know that we're going to have to play our best to win games of cricket over here. But again, this is just a stepping stone, a pillar towards the World Cup next year. Right. Uh, Sophie, thanks a lot for your time and good luck for this tour of England. Awesome. Thanks very much.